that's what that, that, that's really what progressive means instead of a revolution which you'd never accept it's an evolution it's just slow progress it's ever evolving it's living that was not the original intent with our founders and it is really the definition of the progressive movement we're back with rj pastrito burton Folsom jr and larry schweikart he is looking uh, or we're looking at uh, progressives uh, America, and I want to go to the law here, and I want to go to RJ. RJ, um, help me out because my memory is a little sketchy here. I, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy. I believe he was the head of the uh, of Harvard Law in about 1920, and he's the guy who made a fundamental change in America. They no longer studied the Constitution or constitutional law or the founders. They changed to study case law. Which again, no revolution, just evolution. So we never, we slowly but surely keep moving away from the Constitution and the founders, and we, we end up just looking at the last case, right? That's right, and, and I believe the fellow you're talking about uh, is Roscoe Pound, uh, who was, uh, was dean of Harvard Law School. Uh, they're at the tail end of the, of the progressive era, uh, and uh, Pound was uh, uh, basically someone who's responsible for applying progressive ideas to the law. And um, what it's called today is legal realism. That's the name of the, of the theory or the legal philosophy. And basically what legal realism uh, does, Glenn, is it, it tries to take what the Constitution says, which isn't what a lot of these judges think it needs to say, uh, and through case law, through decisions, they apply it, they, shall we say, read it flexibly, liberally, right. uh, and make it say what they think it needs to say. And therefore, what you look at, what you study when you study law, is not the law itself, is not the Constitution, but what other judges have said the law means. Exactly right. And that's so it's, why it's a, it's it, a case it would, law approach. It would be like if... Um, if you're repairing or restoring a car and you never go back to the original uh, schematic of the car you just see all of the repairs and what everybody has done to the car well uh, you know uh, uh, a 1965 Mustang 200 years from now if you're only basing what you're doing on all of the repairs it ain't gonna be anything like a 1965 Mustang Right? That's right. And Glenn, this is, this is why you see during the Supreme Court confirmation hearings, all of the progressive senators are really worked up about precedent. They're obsessed with precedent. What that means is they want to make sure these, these potential justices are going to be guided by what other liberal judges have said over the last 80 years about the Constitution, not what the Constitution actually says. All right. Now let me go to uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Bring, bring a picture of Woodrow Wilson up. I hate this. <laughs> I, this is, I, I mean, I had to tell you, two years ago, I knew nothing about Woodrow Wilson. I hate this SOB. Um, he was an evil, evil dude um, and did more. America should know about Woodrow Wilson because he, I think, has done more to change America than most presidents. In fact, a series of presidents combined. Would you agree with that? Well, he has. You look at the Federal, federal Reserve, the progressive income tax, right. uh, but manipulating with wages and hours, that it's the government's job to determine wages that might be paid, hours of work that might be done. But w w he also um, w did all the work on administrative work, administration, right? He was the guy who wrote it before the 19, early 1900s. Um, and then he also was a guy who helped change history. If I'm not mistaken, it was during his administration that a group of professors, I think from Columbia, progressive professors, got together and said, you know what, our founders were racist white people, what do you say? And they decided to really make progress. We had to detach from the history that we had and make progress from that. Can you tell history? a story? History becomes a tool for the present to affect the future. It no longer becomes a means of looking at the past, but it becomes an, an, active, an active weapon to change society. We saw last week, and we ran a special last week on um, uh, the history of the 20th century and, and fascism and the and, uh, and Soviet Union and Hitler and everything else. And we saw how much has been changed, how much has been left out, et cetera, et cetera. How much of the history that we're taught in textbooks, because I read R.J.'s book on Woodrow Wilson, and 
all the doors opened up on me and I went, oh my gosh, we've been being lied to like crazy. How much of history in America history that we're being taught in schools and colleges and also elementary, et cetera, et cetera, is accurate? Well, a lot is inaccurate. Starting with the progressives came the attack on the Constitution, that the founders were not motivated by uh, putting together a document that had eternal truths in it that one generation should follow, the next generation should follow, and so on. But it was a self-interested document that the founders wrote it and designed it to protect their economic interests. Right. And it became also that, um, when you say eternal truths, that there, there that God was not really there, and it doesn't matter. The Declaration of Independence does not shouldn't even be read today. Didn't didn't um, uh, wasn't it Wilson R J? Do you remember? Wasn't it Wilson that said the uh, uh, the uh, preamble of the Constitution should never be read, and the Declaration of Independence has zero relevance to any other age other than 1776. Yeah, w Wilson said, if you want to understand the real Declaration of Independence disregard the preface. That is to say, uh, that part of it where, you know, those small things like the natural equality of all men, our God-given rights, That's these things was, are, the, yeah. are the permanent ends of government. So what are you left with? You're left with a litany of grievances against, against George III. That is to say, the Declaration is just a kind of historical document. It's, it's, if you're kind of interested in what George III was doing, that right. was a problem. Well, you could read those things, but really no, no relevance for us. Right, and no, forget, dismiss, all men are created equal and endowed by their creator. All of that is garbage and it means nothing. Just look at the list of grievances. Okay, when we come back, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the relationship that progressives have um, where they know better. They just, they do. They're, they're smarter than you. They know better. Back in just a second.